Leo. Hello, Leo. This is your September forecast for 2013. And uh, this month, a little, little special for you. Uh, we're talking about that golden triangle that was in the skies, still somewhat active here. Uh, as we speak under recording, of course, September, it's going to start really loosening up, but it's your hopes, your dreams, and where you're expanding to. And for you, that's the 12th house, the 4th house, and the 8th house. So what does that mean? 12th house is all the subconscious hopes and dreams and the spiritual longing and needing to expand your area where you're in the 4th house, which is the home and uh, property and real estate and uh, Saturn is currently there and Saturn is the planet with restrictive rings so some of you might feel that you're kind of like a little bit on, on hold or where there might be some challenges or delays could be too that in spite of Saturn being on the forefront moving ahead it's not retrograde but there's still something there and then Neptune here in the 8th house that has to do with uh, other people's money such as uh, home mortgages, loans, investments and so forth. So the triangle is good. It's setting things up for you and some of you are starting to see how this is coming together. Some of you might still feel that something is a little locked and that depends on your own personal chart. Um, because you can ask how can that be and I do get those questions it's like it's supposed to be a golden triangle why is my life on hold <laughs> right so the triangle yes is positive energy that's putting things in place for you however though what's going on in your personal chart that can create whatever blocks whatever say you have a square or an opposition to, to Saturn which is trying to put into place you know a new home for you um, well, if that is being squared or opposed, well, then there you go. There's the block, see? So, you know, these solar scopes, they give us the transits of the now and in your solar houses. So we're seeing what's being opposed upon what you have in your birth chart. But those, I can't see, or any astrologers can't see that from this vista point. We have to have your chart for it. But let me tell you what's going on behind whatever you might experience that uh, will be a little bit of a challenge is that the good thing that is putting into place is yes you are saturn is giving you a, a better foundation a better structure that you'll end up being so much happier with now whether that is property it also has to do with uh, family and the past it has to do with your own inner structure and inner foundation uh, when things are uh, a little bit the way they are now you might feel it because it's intense it's in the sign of scorpio and you might go Rrr. you know but as that is happening think about a surgeon with a laser light wanting to kind of cut away you know it's like pruning so that you can grow even stronger and even more so in growth and beauty in times to come once this is over and this is what's being superimposed on no matter where your planets are at birth just trust the process there's generosity coming in behind here from jupiter there is vision coming there from uh, neptune which is painting this beautiful picture for you that you will come to see exactly what it is you have achieved as you're pressing through right now okay Remember that it, it, uh, in order to create a diamond, there's got to be pressure. So it's a good thing. Now you might have been uh, looking over your finances here uh, just recently and you will continue to do so here in September. Uh, the sun, the new moon and Mercury is going through this sector of your chart and it is in the sign of, of um, Virgo. So. That really shows me that you're going to be analytically uh, overviewing what's going on with your finances, tweaking it, making it, should I say, more flexible, looking at what you can kind of sort out that's been leeching on your income, and also looking at potential opportunities 
where you can draw more income to you, which was is going to be beautiful here in two months from now when the sun goes into the fourth house, it will be aligning with that Neptune there. And uh, so Jupiter is kind of setting you up for it, but it might not be before November where you're really going to see the, the consequences of what you're tweaking right now. So use it while you can. We have on September 5th, the new moon uh, is here in this area. And so your affirmations for this month, as you look at your finances, is to tell your higher self that by the law of attraction, I am attracting more money, more income that's going to harmonize with me, my needs now and in the future. And uh, then let it go and then see how that money can start attracting into your life, okay? Then we have uh, Venus here this month. Uh, it is uh, transiting your third house and uh, Venus is all about love and uh, third house is all about communication. So it will pretty much be what you communicate, how you communicate, who you communicate with and bringing out a, a balance, a need, an inner need for you perhaps to not justify but, but to kind of balance up those things that are important to you. So I see it being a month where you're going to be speaking your highest truth and uh, putting it out there so whoever needs to hear it will hear it. Mars is fueling this because it is in the sign of Leo and you are Leo. So you're pretty strong here this month. Uh, Leonians. <laughs> I say Leonians. <laughs> you Leos. Um, so the first house is all about you and how you shine, how you radiate, how you bring yourself out uh, to the public and uh, this month you're definitely going to have this, this aura of strength, this aura of courage and uh, striding ahead here and people will see it and they will hear it and in this uh, Venetian way of communicating as well I see those things being quite important how you interact uh, male female as well too this month because we got Venus and we got uh, and we got uh, Libra and we got Leo going on with our personal love planets okay so lots of love lots of energy and dynamics then we have Jupiter and Jupiter this month still in your 12th house for the subconsciousness and the need to kind of pull back a little bit and listen more within to those uh, signals of where you perceive that you would like to grow and expand for the future. Okay, so you're wrapping up the past 12 years of it. In fact, you're wrapping that up and kind of like overlooking it, being the uh, observer, and uh, having these inner conversations of, well, how do I want my next 12 year uh, Jupiter cycle to look like? Uh, where do I want to grow and expand? Which areas do I want to grow and expand? So this is going to take a little time for you as you're kind of sorting out those needs and it being in the sign of Cancer and in the house of Pisces. Well, it looks like for, for many of you, what you're probably going to want to be implementing more of is the emotional side of your life, the intuitive, emotional um, romantic part as well that that is going to be pretty much you know on your uh, calendar on your map on your agenda and uh, it, it's nice listen to those inner conversations that you're having Saturn we spoke about so I'm not going to go back there and then we have Uranus Neptune and Pluto they move a little slowly so they're still in the houses that we've been speaking about over these last few months but I can go quickly through them. Uranus in the ninth house for, for breaking free from old dogma, uh, really listening to that higher guidance that's coming in where you're reaching more for the metaphysical side and truth of life. So some of you might see that these old ways of thinking, uh, believing, you know, your faith system might start cracking as you're reaching for something that resonates more so with who you are and what it is you want to uh, strive for and achieve as far as faith and philosophy. And then we have Neptune in the eighth house. Well, yes, that is those deeper-seated, rooted emotions uh, and dreams, 
uh, Neptune dreams, and it's in the sign of Pisces, and uh, it rules Pisces, so it's strong here. And the house of uh, Scorpio really makes you want to feel intense feelings. <laughs> You're going really deep, Leos. Okay, you want to really get that drive of feeling alive and making a difference. And uh, I see how you're attuning to this new persona that is in transformation. And that transformation is also coming from Pluto, you know, which, which kind of has the ability to, when time is right and your personal planets line up to it, gives you a point of transformation in this lifetime, like a new incarnation altogether as we complete and shut the door to certain uh, avenues of our life. But let's look at what's going on here also now, September. On top of the month, we have a, a good aspect here, uh, the sun training Pluto, so whatever decision you're making here this day has a pivotal point of breakthrough. Uh, we have the new moon there on the 5th, which should all be about your uh, sowing your seeds of um, money and how you attract and also spend money, you know, kind of balance those things up. On the 7th, we have a very happy day, good day to kind of schedule for anything social or anything that can bring a big smile on your, your lips. And uh, we have Mercury moving out of the financial sector on the 8th, so it's going to be moving into an area that's going to want to communicate more and uh, you will just see how whatever situations are going to be coming up that you will be communicating both deeply and highly. Venus is moving into a very intense part of the chart. It's coming into Scorpio on the 10th. So it's leaving Libra, which has done the balancing act emotionally uh, between people, places, circumstances, partners, uh, doing this. And now from the 10th, it's going to go really deep and you're going to have very strong one-on-one -on -one communications as far as love and romance. And that might bring up something that might have been a little frustrating to you. So you might have, you know, some words of truth here on the 14th, uh, just because you can and because you need to kind of settle some accounts there. And uh, on the 14th, same thing, I'm seeing there's a breakthrough from some kind of male figure uh, a man in your life that can come unexpectedly with something that could be a little surprising. Uh, this would be for you between the first and the ninth house, so it could be some news from far away as well. Then we have you feeling really strong, moving forward 16th. I see you kicking into action, anything with papers, contracts, uh, agreements on this day is good. You know, we have no uh, retrogrades going on here in this area that you need to be wary about. And then I see that things finally can really start picking up some speed and move forward for you. So there's not going to be a lot of drag or delays. Very important papers on the 18th, so anytime there is 16th to 18th. Now this can rule money matters. Venus is uh, uh, right here with Saturn in the fourth house that has to do with home and property, real estate, or your own inner roots. So it's a serious day for your own inner foundation, but it's also a serious day of putting on the map what it is you've been um, striving for. And it ties into that golden triangle that, that kind of has been active here in August. Now you will start seeing the consequences of what that Jupiter has been working behind the scenes for you and now unleashing it there. So that would be um, the, the 18th and 19th. Also, a, um, pretty much, I'd like to say, an intense day emotionally. That can be due to what is going on here, uh, you know, on this level that we just spoke about. But it could also be something romantically uh, inclined on this day, too, that can really, you know, cut through to your heart. <laughs> Put it that way something said or done or an action where you're going to feel that from the very action you will uh, probably feel a pivotal point of some kind of healing there. Only you will know because it can be a little different 
for, for those of you having different planets in your personal chart touching it. So the 19th, Pluto goes direct after many months of sleep. This is good. We need Pluto to push ahead. We need Pluto to help us, you know, transform those areas of our life that it's working on. And we have a, a healing point there on the 20th with Venus touching Chiron. And uh, it, it's a fly-by-night thing, so it could just be, you know, a very kind word or somebody says or does something for you. And on the 20th, we have Saturn and Pluto. So there's some kind of a completion on, uh, I would like to say, con con contractual agreements because it's between your fourth and sixth house. So it, it looks like it would ground itself, root itself in unlocking wherever it is you're heading from this date and then onward, okay? So you're like getting in where you need to go. And then we have a really nice uh, end of the month here with Venus and Jupiter, uh, which is all about fun and play and hanging loose a little bit and uh, really feeling that you can uh, um, rejoice in, in the, and be proud of some of the things that you have worked for because now you're starting to see it. It's all coming together here. And so that is fantastic for you there, Leo. So this is pretty much what we have for the forecast of this month, but uh, even more so if you listen to your rising sign and your moon sign, it will give you another angle in on what is taking place here for September. So until next time, see you then.